Hello and welcome back. Today we'll be discussing the first part of Chapter 4, Incline Organic Chemistry, which has to deal with nomenclature. Nomenclature specifically of alkanes and cycloalkanes. So let's get started. Let's just take a minute to define what alkanes are. So alkanes are the basic hydrocarbons, the most the simplest hydrocarbons we have, those containing just carbon hydrogen single bonds and we've seen some examples of that so far. Uh, we can also have an alkene that has a double bond for example and an alkyne that has a triple bond and then we have a special type of double bonded system that has alternating single and double bonds in a ring that's called aromatic. So these are all hydrocarbons and we'll learn to name all of these molecules as we move through this course but for this chapter we're going to stick with just naming alkanes. So traditionally many organic compounds have been given common names some because they were discovered before the actual uh, molecular formulas were able to be deduced and some because they're just so complex it would be very difficult to name them with IUPAC nomenclature. IUPAC stands for International Union of Pure and Applied Chemists and that's the word that we use for the, uh, the uh, systematic nomenclature methods. Okay so here we have some examples of some common names for organic molecules. On the left we have formic acid which is isolated from fire ants and so that comes from the Latin word for ant which is formica. I was bitten by a fire ant today as a matter of fact and uh, it's not a pleasant experience. Next we have urea which was isolated from urine and then we have morphine this very large molecule. And On the right we have barbituric acid which just happened to be uh, named in honor of a woman known by Adolf von Bayer who discovered barbituric acid. Okay, so again, the IUPAC system or the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemists, these guys came up with a system, a systematic way of naming organic molecules and that includes identifying the parent chain in that molecule or the longest carbon, the longest continuous carbon chain in the molecule, then identifying the things that are hanging off of that chain which are called substituents and we name those and then we locate, we, add, we assign a locant to those substituents which means we number them and then we assemble the name. So we're going to look at how to do that in this video. So first we learn to identify the parent chain. That's the longest consecutive chain of carbon atoms. Okay, and so if we look at this molecule on the left, the left, it looks kind of like a blob. But if we, if we, what we're trying to do here is find the longest continuous, continuous path of carbon atoms, and that does not have to be. Um, uh, you know, going from left to right, like we're used to in the English language, leading, reading from left to right. And so uh, we're, we don't always have that in an organic molecule. In fact, it can be from right to left, top to bottom, uh, upper to lower, as we see in this case. So the longest continuous carbon chain in this molecule is actually um, starting right here and moving along this red path. Okay, and why is that? Let's number them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so if we choose a different path, for example, we could go one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, five, six. We could have a lot of different potential paths in this molecule. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine so it turns out it doesn't matter whether we go from left to right as far as finding the longest carbon chain but we're going to learn that there is a difference because of the number of substituents on those chains okay um again we could have gone one two 
three, four, five, six. So we want to identify the longest carbon chain. And in fact, we want to identify the longest carbon chain with the maximum number of substituents on it, which is why the one in left, uh, in red, I'm sorry, was chosen here. All right, so that's what we're getting to here. We want to maximize, if we have more than one possibility for the parent chain, we want to maximize the number of substituents. So for the molecule on the left, it has three substituents, or, or I'm sorry, the path on the left in red has three substituents, and the path on the right only has two substituents, and it seems like two would be simpler than three, but in fact it's easier to name a molecule with the maximum number of substituents because we're keeping those substituents as simple as possible. And that'll make sense in just a little bit. So one of the very important things for you to do is to memorize these prefixes. It, we need to be able to name those parent chains and the substituents according to the number of carbon atoms that are associated with them. So if we have a parent that has one carbon, then that is called meth, okay? If we have a parent with two carbons, it's called eth. If we have three carbons, it's called prop. Four is but. Five carbons is pent. Six carbons is hex. Seven carbons is hept. Eight carbons is oct. Nine carbons is ten, I'm uh, sorry, non. Ten carbons is deck. Eleven carbons is undeck. And twelve carbons is dodeck. Now for my students, I expect you to memorize these, these prefixes, especially up to 10. Be preferable to memorize them up to 12, but there are prefixes that go on from there. Um, so if you have an alkane, which means you don't have any double bonds or triple bonds or other functional groups in the molecule, then with one carbon, the molecule would be methane. Two carbons would be ethane. Three carbons would be propane. Four carbons would be butane. 5 carbons would be pentane, 6 would be hexane, and so on. So for example, if we had a molecule with 3 carbons, what would we call it? Just 3 carbons and no double bonds, no triple bonds, that molecule is called saturated. If it doesn't have any double or triple bonds, it's called a saturated alkane. This molecule has three carbons in the longest carbon chain, which is the only chain, one, two, three. And it doesn't matter whether we number it from left to right or right to left, it doesn't matter. In fact, if we number it, if we go ahead and do that, right to left, it's one, two, three. So for three carbons, our prefix is prop. We don't have any single or double bonds, so this is an alkane. So this molecule is called propane. Okay, and you've probably heard of propane before. It's the gas that you use to light your or run your barbecue grill. So sometimes we may have a parent chain that has a, a, a ring. Okay, and so if we have three carbons in a ring, remember our prefix for three is prop. Okay, here we don't have any double bonds or triple bonds. So it would be a derivative of propane, but since it's a ring, we give it this prefix cyclo. So this molecule is cyclopropane. The next molecule has four carbons, and for four carbons, our prefix is but. Okay, so this molecule is in a ring, so it's cyclobutane. The next molecule has five carbons, one, two, three, four, five, and they're in a ring. The prefix for five is pent, so this is cyclopentane. No double bonds, no triple bonds. So let's see if we can identify and name the parent in each of the following compounds. So what we want to do is find the longest continuous carbon chain. So for this molecule, the longest carbon chain would be this path. Okay, so it would be one, two, three, four, five, six. For six carbons, our uh, parent is hex, and since this is a um, an alkane, this would be a derivative of hexane. Okay. For the next one, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If we go that way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If we go that way. 
but we want to maximize our substituents. So in fact, the yellow path would have three substituents, whereas the blue path would only have two. So the yellow path is in fact our preferred path for the parent chain, okay, giving us three substituents. And that's seven carbons, so that would be a derivative of heptane. Uh, this is a cyclic compound. Now for a cyclic compound, some students do get confused. It doesn't really matter where you start numbering that ring, except that we want to give our substituents the lowest number possible. So we'll get to that a little bit later on. But anyway, you number the ring and the substituents separately. And that's what really confuses students with rings, okay? Rings and the things hanging off the rings, those chains, those are those have to be considered separately. And so this would be a seven carbon ring. So this is a derivative of heptane. The parent would be hept, a cy cycloheptane because it's in a ring, okay? And a lot of students do forget the cyclo just like I did. So be careful with that. Now substituents are named very similarly to the parents. We just put, instead of the A-N-E ending, we just put a Y-L on them. So that keeps it pretty simple, okay? So one a carbon on a substituent is methyl, two carbons is ethyl, three is propyl, four is butyl, five is pentyl, six is hexyl, seven is heptyl, eight is octyl, nine is nonyl, and ten is decyl, okay? So uh, the parent here would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is a derivative of decane. Okay. Now, um, when we do name, we'll go ahead and name this molecule, even though we really haven't gotten to that yet. When we do name a molecule, we want to um, arrange this, we want to identify our substituents. Let's go ahead and do that. Here we have an ethyl group because it has two carbons. Okay. Here we have a methyl group because it has one carbon. So when we're counting the substituents, we're looking at the carbons that are not on the main chain. They're attached to the main chain. Okay. And then this substituent has one, two, three carbons. So this would be a propyl substituent. Okay, so when we do name a molecule like this, first thing we do is identify the parent, then we identify and name the substituents, then we're going to arrange those substituents alphabetically. So alphabetically this would be ethyl, methyl, then propyl. Okay, and then we assign a locant or a number to each substituent. What we want to do is start at one end of the chain and give that sub first substituent the lowest number possible. So if we're going from left to right, our first substituent would be four. And if we're going from right to left, one, two, three, four. So we've got a two-way tie. Now we're going to go and see where our sec second substituent is. So if we're going from left to right, our second substituent would be at the fifth carbon. Right to left, it would be at the sixth carbon. So we're going to go from left to right with our numbers. So this would be 4-ethyl, 5-propyl, 7-methyl. 4-ethyl, 5-propyl, 7-methyl. Now we're going to keep those in alphabetical order. So when we assemble the name for this molecule, it would be 4-ethyl, 7-methyl, 5-propyl, decane. And notice that we have put hyphens between the numbers and the words. Okay, so the number and the next letter. Um, and then we just put the parent at the end. So we're going to look at this in more depth, but this is just an introduction to naming an organic molecule. It looks really long, but it's actually, if you, some of these molecules can be pretty simple, they're just long. So they're getting to that now. So for the substituent, you've just put YL instead of A and E at the ending. Okay. 
and then you arrange them alphabetically, assign a locant, and then uh, assemble the name. All right, so uh, identifying which is the substituent and which is the parent can be a little bit confusing, but the parent is almost always the longest chain. So it doesn't matter whether it's a ring or a longer chain. A ring can be a substituent, a chain can be a substituent, depending on which one is longer. So for your purposes right now, the parent is going to be the longer carbon chain, whether that's in a ring or not in a ring. Okay, so the parent here in orange for this propyl cyclohexane has six carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the substituent has three carbons. One, two, three. So that makes the parent the six carbon ring and the substituent the three carbon chain. So that would be propyl cyclohexane. Okay, so on the molecule on the right, we have a three carbon ring, one, two, three, and a four carbon chain, one, two, three, four. Therefore, the parent is now the chain, the, the chain that's not in a ring, so that's going to be butane. It has four carbons, that's but, so that's butane. And then the substituent would be cyclopropyl because it has three carbons. So this is cyclopropyl butane or one cyclopropyl butane because it's on the first carbon of that chain. So that really trips students up. You can't number the chain and the ring together. Like in other words, this wouldn't be nine carbons. This wouldn't be a nonane over here. So that's not correct. Um, you have to name, you have to number the uh, rings and the chains separately. Okay, so again let's name a few of these before we move on. So we have, uh, so this molecule, let's see what our longest chain is. One, two, three, four, five, six, going that way. And one, two, three, four, five, going that way. I would be at one, two, three, four, going that way. So the six carbon chain on the red path is gonna be my longest chain. And starting at the top where I have the red one is also going to be the correct end to start with. So I want to start numbering at one end of that parent chain. And I wanna give my, subs my first substituent the lowest number possible, okay? first substituent needs the lowest number possible. So my substituent here, I'm going to box it in in orange, is a methyl group. And my parent chain has six carbons, so the prefix for that is hex. Since this is an alkane, this, the parent is hexane. So at the third carbon, I have a methyl group. So this molecule is 3-methylhexane. All right, let's look at the next one. Um, I can see that if this is a substituent here, it's gonna be closer to the left, I think. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If I went up this path, that would just be six carbons long. So let's try it this way. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that's not longer. So I think that's our longest path with seven carbons. Two, three, four. So it doesn't matter actually if we go from left to right. One, two, three, four. That would be the fourth carbon from the left. One, two, three, four uh, from the right, and fourth carbon from the left. So we have a two carbon chain. That's four carbons from the end. And that two carbon chain then would be an ethyl group. The parent has seven carbons. So that's heptane. So this would be four ethyl heptane, and it doesn't matter which end you number from. Alright, the next one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Again, that's heptane as our parent, and we have a substituent at carbon number 3 and a substituent at carbon 4. Now, if we started numbering from the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, that would be further away from the end, so we want to start numbering from the left. 
So if we have more than one substituent of the same type, then we use prefixes like di, tri, tetra, okay? So this would be a three. We have a methyl at three and four. So we say three comma four dimethyl, and we'll look at that again in a minute, dimethyl heptane, okay? Uh, this next molecule, let's see how what our, where our longest carbon chain is. Well, let, you might think to do it this way, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, that's one way to do it. Maybe that'll work. The next one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Whoops, that path is longer. Okay, so that gives us a parent of nonane. And do we need to start at the carbon I have for nine or the carbon I've labeled as one? One, two, three, four, five would give us our propyl substituent. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So it really doesn't matter if we go from the bottom here or the top. It's going to be at the fifth carbon. We have this, let me do it in a different color. We have this one, two, three carbon chain. So at the fifth carbon, we have a propyl group. So that'll be five propyl. And now our parent has nine carbons. Nine is non. And this is an alkane, so that's nonane, 5 propyl nonane. Our next compound, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I think that's going to be our longest chain. Let's see which side we number from. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Eight. Now, this one's a little bit tricky, and we're going to learn these rules as we go along, okay? But we actually, if you start where I've numbered, uh, or if you start along the yellow path, okay? If you start along the yellow path, then our first substituent is at carbon 4, and that is a methyl. So yellow is 4-methyl, okay? 5-ethyl, because that has two carbons. So methyl is one carbon, ethyl is two carbons. So at the 4-carbon, we have one, one carbon substituent, and at the 5-carbon, we have a two-carbon substituent. So we have 4-ethyl, 5-methyl. If we go along the blue path, we have 4-ethyl, 5-methyl, okay? Well, it turns out that if there's a tie like this, so it doesn't matter which end we go from as far as the numbers of our substituents, but what matters is if there's a tie like this, then we alphabetize those substituents, and we want to give the one with the lower uh, letter, I mean, the lower, uh, the priority on in the alphabetization, the lower number, okay? So that means the blue path would be the correct way because ethyl comes before methyl in the alphabet. So since there's a tie, we want to go for ethyl 5-methyl. Now, if there's not a tie, we don't care about which one comes first in the alphabet. We want our first substituent to have the lowest number, okay, or our to give the second substituent the lowest number if we have a tie at the first, okay. But if we have a tie both ways, or every way, then we go by alphabet alphabetization, okay. So this molecule would be 4-ethyl, 5-methyl, and then we have 8 carbons, so that would be octane. Eight is oct, like the stop sign. Okay, and speaking of stop signs, this is going to be my last slide in this particular video. And so I want to go ahead and name this next one. One, two, three, four, five. That's a five carbon ring, and there's a methyl group on the ring. So I can start numbering anywhere in a ring. I don't have to start at the end of the molecule. So this would be one methyl cyclo, because it's a ring, pentane. Five carbons is pent. The next molecule, H, is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So at the one carbon, I have two methyl groups. So that's one comma one dimethyl cyclo, okay, heptane. And the next one, one, two, three, three is prop, 
So that is one methyl. I have a methyl group at the first carbon here. One methyl cyclopropane. Okay. So that's all I want to cover in this video. In the next video, we're going to do more naming. So I'll see you in the next video.